Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to do a playthrough of Dresden Files. I've already done one playthrough. I made a couple errors and it's kind of annoyed me and this game is so quick and fun. I thought, well, let's do another book, huh? So we're doing the White Knight book. Now, what I did wrong in my playthrough before, one was very specific to the actual book, so I'm not going to go into it. But the other thing I did do wrong is I thought all of these talents that everybody had was one use only. They're not. When you discard for fate points, you can do this over and over again unless you have one that says use this and then flip it over. So I had thought I could only use like Harry Dresden's um, talent to move some uh, an obstacle or an advantage one closer in range. I thought that was only a one-time use, but it's not. You can use it every time he discards. So <laughs> that changes the game a bit. It makes it not easier, but more attainable. There were some times where I was like, I don't even know why I'm trying. I should just start over. No, this it's even better balanced because of that. So <laughs> I really like that. So I'm not going to go through the rules. We know how to play. If you don't know how to play, you can check out my first playthrough. I go through setup and everything like that. Um, I am playing on the easiest mode, so I have all of my fate points down here are all in the available area. And then what we're just going to do is we're just going to start laying out these cards. So we've got ghouls and then reinforcements, missing witches, the magical wraith. Oh, that obstacle's at level five or at range five and drive off cowl. Okay. Then I'm just going to shuffle these up, and let's do the bottom. We've got Identify the Scavies, Lucille's Sacrifice. Ooh, two advantages over here. Psych Psychic Link with Elaine, Victoria Malavora, um, What is Cowell's Plan, and Scavies Agent. Now, if you remember from the last playthrough, a lot of these cards will interact with each other. So, like this reinforcements, when taken, the active player distributes three card draws among other players. Add two hits to Vitroyo, Malvora, and Ghouls. So here's Ghouls, and here's Vitroria, Malvora. Uh, let's see, what else is interacting? Our obstacle here can't find Thomas. Oh, I, yeah, I remember that. No cases can receive clues. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so we're going to have to get rid of that. And look at how far back that is. This guy, when defeated, collect two um, FP for each solved case. Nice. We have um, an advantage here. Cannot take until all other advantages have been taken. And then we collect five plus or minus four fame points. <gasps> this one, um, when taken, active player takes one card back from her discard pile. Add two hits to the Scavis agent, which is over here. This one, when defeated, add four clues to what is Cowell's plan. So we don't want to defeat this till we get rid of this obstacle. Oh, that obstacle is going to be a pain. When defeated, add two clues to the identity, uh, identify the Scavis. Okay, I think, and that's this over here. Wow. Well, this will be fun. I think this is going to be a hard one. Remember what our goal is. We have to solve more cases than there are foes left on the board. So we have one, two, three, four, five foes and three clues. So we're going to, have to do a lot of hits. And I knew that ahead of time. I've never played this one, but I I looked up what the um, proration of, of this one was. And I picked characters that were a little bit more hit heavy because of that. So let's look at what we picked. Here are three characters. We've got Harry, Carlos, and Hank. Okay. Harry, we have the same talent and blasting rod, or so it's talent and stunt. When Harry discards for fate points, you may move one obstacle or advantage card forward or backward one space. That's how we're going to move up that uh, can't find Thomas. And then his stunt, as your turn, you can flip this card over to add four hits to any one foe that will be immediately defeated by one to four hits. Carlos here, when you discard for fate points, you can remove one clue from any one case and add two hits to the foe with the most hit hits tokens on it. Oh, nice. It hurts to be this good. <laughs> I love it. I can just hear it in my head. Got your back. As your turn, flip this card over to choose one player, including yourself, to take one card back from his or her discard pile. Nice. Last but not least, we have Hank. When you discard for fate points, you may add one hit to one foe that has at least two hits on it. See what I mean? I've got lots of things about taking out foes. And then as your turn, flip this card over to take an attack card with a non-infinite range from another player's discard pile into your hand. Oh, I love that. See, another attack. Nice. We're going to start off with Harry. Harry's going to start with Refledium, a take advantage card. It's going to cost us two plus or minus one fate points. It's got a range of two. And so we have to roll a die to determine if it's a plus one or a minus one or zero. 
Yes! So that means it's only one fate point to use this. We'll move this over by one. And we're going to grab this reinforcements. Active player distributes three card draws among other players. And then add two hits to Vittoria Malvora and the Ghouls. So the Ghouls are right here. That's the whole reason I really wanted to do that. So we got a hit and we get to put in these card draws. But then we also moved up our obstacle here. Now it's at a range four. So that's nice. Victoria will also receive two hits. We're going to have Carlos Ramirez draw two cards. Oh, nice. He's got, what, another attack and an overcome. Range two plus. Overcome one obstacle. Oh, nice. And he gets to draw a card. And Hank down here is going to draw one card, and we've got another investigation. That's good. We don't have a ton of investigation. We might not be able to place any clues yet, but we can take out a ghoul here. This is going to cost four fate points, but we're also going to do four hits at a range one. And we're doing our disintegrator screen. We'll snag one, two, three, four. Yeah, not bad. And those four will take out this ghoul, which is perfect. That is one enemy down. Still need to get rid of that obstacle, though. And it's at range three, though. That's not terrible. It might be a tad bit immature, but I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to use this stunt. As your turn, flip this card over to take an attack card with a non-infinite range from another player's discard pile and put it in your hand. So he's going to grab this disintegrator screen, and now he has that in his hand and he can use that. But it's because I don't really want him to use any of his other attacks yet, and we have some good ways to get some clues on investigations, but I can't do that yet until I get rid of that blasted obstacle. Because we did it this way, we're going to discard Fuego, which is kind of sad to do this. But we gain five fate points back, and then when we discard for fate points, you may move one obstacle or advantage card forward or backward one space in either row. Perfect. So all five of my fate, yoink, comes back, and I can use it again. And I think we all know what I'm planning on doing here. We're going to swap these two. Nice. Range of two. We're going to use the Warden's Will. Overcome one obstacle within a range of two costs us two fate points. We'll move those two fate back over to the spent area. And we've just eliminated the Can't Find Thomas. Yeah. And we move these both down. Now we can start putting clues on investigations. For Hank's turn, we're going to have a little fun. Blazing Tornado. Look at that picture. It costs five, but we're going to place four hits at a range of two, but we get to add two hits to one foe adjacent to the target foe. Five is kind of a lot. Two, four, five, but he's going to put a total of six hits out. I, I think that's worth it. We're really hammering this top row. <laughs> one, two, three, four, and then two to this drive off cowl. But if you look at this, we only need three more and we can take him out. But we don't want to take him out until we've solved a clue or a case if we can, because then we can gain fate points back. Harry is going to soul gaze. He's going to look inside his mind and try and figure out about those missing witches. It's going to cost five fate points, but we could potentially get seven clues if we get lucky here. We're looking for pluses. Ooh, okay. That's a nothing and a plus, so that's six. That's going to cost five fate points. Oh, it's almost all of them. We only have one left. And you know what? I think we're going to do identify the Scavis here instead of the witches because that means we only need, what, four here? No, five left to solve this one. And it makes these uh, um, advantages a little easier to get. We're going to have Carlos discard regional commander. That's going to get us four fate points back. Now, he could do... It hurts to be this good. When discarding for fate points, you may remove one clue um, from any one case and add two hits to the foe with the most hits. I don't want to do that. I am, I'm I'm going to need to be able to solve a couple of these cases, so I'm going to leave all the clues on there. But that at least gets us four fate points back. One, two, and three, four. We have, what, five left? <laughs> Whew. I think this time we're going to play Excavation for Hank. Now, it's going to use four out of the five fate points that we have available to us. But if we can get at least a plus one overall on those three dice that we're going to have to roll, that's going to solve our first case, Identify the Scavis. Let's give them a shake and roll them up. Oh, look at that. That's a plus one. That's a total of five. That took four out of the five of our fate. <laughs> but five is just enough to finish our first case. Yes. Now that just means we have one case to what? Four foes are still out here. So now if we got rid of all of the foes that are out here, we could win the game. Oh, we might have to solve one more case. Oh, this is going to be hard. 
this card is great, but we only have one investigation in each row. So he's only going to be adding two clues for four fate points. Harry's not going to do that. So he's going to gain four fate points back, and then he's going to use his talent again. When you discard for fate points, you may move one obstacle or one advantage forward or backward one space in either row. Gaining four fate is great. <laughs> And you guys are very welcome to make fun of me in my silly little comments. Sorry. So you see these two? This one we cannot take until all our advantages have been taken. So I'm going to swap these two locations so that next time Harry can grab this psychic link with Elaine. We're going to have Carlos do a big attack here. The Entropic Blast. It's going to cost us all five of our fate points that we have stored up. He does four hits, though, and then may add one hit to one foe or add one clue to one case adjacent to the target foe. We're using up all five of these, though. He's going to hit this Drive Off Cowl for four. So that's going to do, what, a total of six? And then add one to this Madrigal Wraith. And that's going to make this guy be at five health. Perfect. And when I said five health, I mean five damage. <laughs> We're going to have Hank now discard this Inferno attack for four fate points because we really need some fate points. The reason I'm doing that is he's got one now in his hand for four fate points. It does four damage. Yeah, its range is only one, but I think we're going to be able to get most of our enemies within that range. So we might as well discard this one to get some fate points back. And when he discards for fate points, he can add one hit to one foe that has at least two hits on it. We'll move these four back. Don't mind if I do. And we're going to drop a hit right here on Vittorio Mal Malvora. Before moving on, I just wanted you guys to see this. Look at it. Harry is almost out of cards. He only has two left. Carlos is doing great with four. And Harry has the most over here with five because, remember, he grabbed one from the discard pile even. So I've got to manage the fact that Harry only has two cards. But even still, I think I'm going to have to play his advantage card this round. Harry's going to play Ventas Servitas. Fate cost is only one and range is one to take one advantage. One fate point is not terrible. And we're going to grab this one. When taken, active player takes one card back from her discard pile. Add two hits to the Scavis agent. Yes. So we'll move all of these up. And place two hits on this Scavis agent right here. We're going to have Harry grab Soul Gaze because it's worth a ton of fate points of so nothing else he can discard it. But he can also get up to seven clues with it as well. So we're going to put that back into his hand. We're now going to have Carlos play Got Your Back. As your turn, flip this card over to choose one player to take one card back from their discard pile. And we're going to do that, and we're going to use Harry. And the reason we're doing Harry is we have one more advantage, but no one has any take advantage cards. So we're going to put Ventus Servitas back into Harry's hand. Yeah. I mean, it's only a one-cost card, but it's going to be really helpful for us. For Harry's turn, we're going to play Drawn to the Flame. It's going to cost us three fate points, but then we're looking at maybe putting two or even potentially three clues within a range of three. Now, if we get this as a plus one, your investigation adds three clues to the target, collect two fate points. So I really want this to be a plus. Come on, a plus, please. Yes, that's a plus. You know what that means. We use three, we get two back, and we can place three clues at a range of three so we're definitely placing on this what is cowl's plan because if we take this guy out he's going to put four clues onto this one so i'm hoping to take out this investigation and all but one of the enemies here harry's going to play his ventas servitas a second time now to take an advantage at range one this means we only have one fate point left but we get to take lasile's sacrifice and now we get to roll five dice no, no, we get five fate points and then roll four dice and add that or subtract that to whatever we roll. But the big thing is, too, these all move within an easier range. Yes. At minimum, we'll gain one fate point here. Oh, man. So that's five plus one is six, five, four, three. So we gain three fate points. I can't complain. The dice have been going my way, at least for the beginning part of the game. We'll grab our three fate points, and I mean, we got four in the in the pool. That's not bad. We're going to have Carlos discard this authority card to gain one fate point. We're still not going to use his hurts to be good because we, we need to get another investigation done. I can't, I can't lose clues to get hits. I, I've got enough other ways to get hits, so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to discard this for fate. One fate back. Not bad. 
Remember this disintegrator screen? Yeah, we already did this once. We're going to do it again. This is Hank playing it, even though it's Carlos's card. So four fate points, four hits at a range of one. Four fate points means we're only going to have one left. But who even cares? We're going to hit this Vic uh, Vittorio Malvora. And now we only need two more hits and this guy's gone. And then he's going to add four clues to this one, which would be sweet. So that is just a great combo. Now it's Harry's turn, and he is going to use his Blasting Rod. As you as your turn, flip this card over to add four hits to any one foe that will be defeated by one to four hits. That honestly could take out this guy, this guy, or this guy. But this guy has four hits before he's gone, so I'm going to use it on the Drive-Off Cowl. And that means we only have three uh, enemies left on the board. We still only have one case solved, though. <laughs> So we need to be able to at least solve another case and eliminate these two foes. That's kind of what my plan is. So trying to finish this and eliminate two foes. I'm going to be very risky, you guys. I am going to discard grenades for Carlos. That's going to get us three fate points. And then I'm going to play this. When you discard for fate points, you may remove one clue from one case to add two hits to a foe with the most hit tokens. And you're going to see why I'm doing this. I'm actually going to use that this time. Three fate is great. Then we'll remove one clue from here. And we get to add two hits to this guy because he has the most hits on him. He has seven. This guy up here, he only has five. And this, this gal over here only has two. So we get to add two hits to that guy. That makes him a total of nine. Takes him out. And since it takes him out, we add four clues to the cow's plant. So we gained three clues by doing that. I think it was worth it. We're still not even halfway there, though, on what's Kyle's plan. That's what I'm worried about. There's a lot to go because there's 14 clues that we need. And we still need to take out this guy up here. But we can maybe leave him for the final showdown. I think we've got to focus on this now. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here because I'm going to play this card and I'm, I'm actually I'm not going to play. I'm going to discard it for fate points. We maybe could get four fate points back here. And then don't forget, this is for Hank. Hank can now, when he discards for fate, you can add one hit to one foe that has at least two hits on it. We're really hoping for a positive or a blank. Or how about a negative? Bummer. So that means only one fate point. I said one, it's two. We still get two because it's three minus one. We'll pull these two back. And then we'll place a sixth hit on Magical Wraith. Remember how we pulled Soul Gaze out of the discard pile for Harry? <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep this one and use it now. It's going to cost five fate, which we only have, what, I think six, two, four, six. Yeah, but it is worth it in beans because if we could get seven here, oh my gosh. Rolling two dice. Let's see what we get. Oh, a minus. So that's only going to be a four. That might have just killed us. We'll see. Two, four five Ow. we'll place the four hits on what is cowl's plan but that means we still need four more hits here or clues we're gonna have carlos discard emerald light that's gonna give us two plus or minus one fate points i think it's about time i roll a plus don't you think well it's a zero we'll, we'll still take two fate points two is better than zero <laughs> Hank is going to discard his Flame Barrier. He's going to get two Fate Points, and he can put that final hit on that Magical Wraith. Don't forget, when we take out this Magical Wraith, we get to add two Fate Points for each solved case. Well, we have one solved case, so we are going to put a total of four Fate Points back. Let's grab ourselves four Fate. One, two, three, four. Yes! I think we might have actually just done it, you guys. We're going to play the Private Investigator for um, Harry. I don't care about range because our range is one and three even minus one is going to be two. So we're still good. It's going to cost three fate and we put two clues. Three fate going back over here. Two clues means we're at 12. We only need two more. Carlos has this banter card. It's a two plus or minus one. Way too risky. I'm just going to discard it for two fate points. We'll push those two back here. And then we're going to win the game with light dons. Cost two fate points and we can put two clues at a range of one. Here's the two fate point cost. 
And then two clues, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, clears this case for us. Nice. Then we look to see we have one foe left on the board and two investigations solved. We have solved more investigations than foes on the board. We have won the game. And if you look here, I used exactly every single one of our cards that we had. No cards in anybody's hands. Every stunt used. And that's the thing about this game, you guys. I cannot believe how tight it is every time. I mean, this is the first time I've actually won where I didn't need to use the showdown. But if you look at this showdown car, it was only going to be helpful against foes anyways. There's nothing here for clues so and for cases. So I had to solve those cases anyways. But I just love how tight it is. And every time I go, oh, if I won, maybe I should go to a harder difficulty. But then I think to myself... I just barely won that. I mean, I snuck that out. I got some lucky rolls. I got a couple unlucky, but mostly lucky rolls. And still, I just barely won. So yeah, that's why I usually just keep it on the easy. If I win maybe more often than what's technically I should, I don't care. I just have so much fun. It is so fun to puzzle this out. It's a big puzzle, and I'm okay with that. That's you know, I know that coming into this game, and that's why I enjoy it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I put this out on Halloween or around there. So this is kind of our Halloween themed game. You know, it's a little bit horror, scary, you know, magic, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in a couple weeks when I get back. Thanks so much for watching.